Summer means the start of many local events here in Del Norte. One of the events I remember the most fondly is the Mountain Men Rendezvous. Every summer near the end of June, the Jet Smith Mountain Men host their rendezvous at the Rowdy Creek Gun Club. Unfortunately for me, most of the event this year, I was out of town. However, I managed to swing by and learn more on the last day. It was the afternoon of July 3rd, and as I pulled into a parking space, the sounds of black powder rifles firing in the distance could be heard. I greeted the first person I saw and asked where everyone was. The bulk of the rendezvous was at a place they called Primitive. Beyond that point, no vehicles were allowed. You know, to really cement the early 19th century immersion. After the short walk to Primitive, I encountered the first of the mountain men. I got to meet many names. The second oldest member. He filled me in on the background of the Jed Smith mountain men. My name is Dave Solar. We're now called many names. Well, we are, this is, we're uh, members, or I'm a member of this club, the Jed Smith mountain men, and uh, have been since about 1977. Been faithful all these years, and uh, basically we, you know, we're uh, kind of, kind of in do the reenactment era of uh, the fur trading era, which is about in the 1820s uh, to 1840s. We have uh, we have uh, archery, primitive archery. We have uh, tomahawk and knife art, uh, trail walks. We have the pistol trail walks and the trade gun trail walks, which is a smoothbore flintlock. And, but everything has to be muzzleloader black powder. So you'd say this is a living history event? Kind of like, yeah. You know, uh, but, uh, you know, we get people uh, from all walks of life that are, get interested in it, and it's, it's kind of neat. You get to do things that, and there's no end if you like to making things. There is no end to that. I mean, you can make your clothing, you can make, uh, uh, you can build guns and knives and tomahawks and all that. Um, you know, whatever your interest in craft, leather work or whatever, flint napping, you know, arrowheads and stuff, making bows. The Jed Smith Mountain Men are always looking for new members, craftsmen, traders, and shooters alike. We shoot at this site every last Sunday of the month unless it's a holiday, we're going to land on a holiday, then we change it. But it's always the last Sunday of the month, and people are welcome to come and see what we're doing, and maybe uh, we can get them to participate. Even if they don't have anything, we can always loan them a bow or uh, have a gun that they can shoot, and uh, if they like shooting, you know, because a lot of people are like to shoot, you know, center fire rifles, mm -hmm. and, uh, but they never shot black powder. Many names also showed me the sundial they used to keep time. He got numbers on top here, you see, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So that's pointing at 2. And actually, he didn't make the adjustments for the different days. Um, so this is pointing at, it's, no, it's, it's not 2 yet, that's right. It's pointing right here. So it'd be, that's about right. Because this is, would be two, uh, 130, and it's just pointing about right here, and it is 140. So that's, yeah, that's pretty close. <laughs> pretty accurate. A particularly interesting character was Just Dancing. Of all the participants, she was the most committed to keeping character. Uh, I'm Just Dancing, is my Rondi name. I hail from over the hill, over in Oregon. I've been wanting to play this game for three decades. Came to the Del Norte Rod and Gun Club. I'll be darned if they were shooting the what is it, pigeons, clay pigeons. I heard these booms down the road, and one of the gals said, Oh, that's those black powder guys. I was a happy camper. Three decades of wanting to do this, I finally found my people. <laughs> so, you've always wanted to engage in, I guess, uh, what would you call it, living history, specifically of this era? Well, I was born in the wrong century. <laughs> this is my you lifestyle. Like doing, yeah. <laughs> and you get your Rondi name by just being around feisty people, having mm. fun. You make a mistake, you create a name. So are those a uh, period correct uh, cheese sauce over there? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say if they had a chance, that's what they'd be eating. A cheese well, whiz. The, uh, uh, the thing here, like we're in, in the primitive sector, but we're not extremely 100% uh, primitive. I mean, as long as some things are out of sight, because, um, you know, this is still modern times, 
But back uh, here in Primitive, I mean, you won't see coolers and, you know, stainless steel stuff. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to keep it all covered so you don't break the, the feel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the atmosphere. You don't want to have a cell phone go off mm -hmm. and ruin it. You know, everybody's back in time. After talking with Jess Danson, she showed me her fire starter in camp. Unfortunately, due to Green Diamond not wanting open pit fires on their land, Just Danson was unable to demonstrate the fire starter in use. This is a fire start kit where they always would have it in a bag or belt or something. And you've got your, got your striker, you got your flint, and then I don't have it, but you've got char cloth, you make a nest, and then you're clicking into your char cloth and hmm. the movie the mountain men with charlton heston is a great example of making a, a fire this way everybody needs to watch that movie the mountain men charlton heston and brian key so they weren't just matches back then everything was a process absolutely yeah and you could have uh fat wood which makes starting a fire a little easier. You would, uh, this is a, let's see, fatwood is, it's not burls, but it's a sappy part like in the knots of trees. Mm -hmm. And they would save that and then you cut it and you would use your knife and you'd splinter little shavings and then you'd have a little start going there and then you do your fire start, you put it in there and poof. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell me about more of the stuff here? Like, uh, what's that stuff hanging there to dry? Oh, just herbs. You know, this is my uh, summer camp. I stay here for a uh, couple of months, and the guys running the trap lines will check in. I'll give them herbs. Mm. I'll work. They'll leave their furs with me. They supply me with meat. So, uh, yeah, we take care of each other here. So you all just kind of come out here and just live like how they exact like exactly how they wouldn't sleep out here and do everything out here. No, I'm giving you a story. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm drying herbs to cook with. You know, you got lavender, oregano, mints. Um, one of the things, uh, I'm just in process doing this, Beaver. But you want them to have them out on a round. Stretch them out better. This is a bigger beaver, and I'm just in process trying to stretch him out and are these caught by the uh, people the at the rendezvous yeah. yeah well again we're in story time okay we're not in reality okay <laughs> i'm not i'm not sure how uh i don't know the trap how the trapping laws are down here oh but, uh, i was up in alaska we ran a trap line but um there's my bow that's my camp kitchen and my most of the people at the rendezvous had a rendezvous name, which was based on mistakes. No Powder gives his story of how he got his rendezvous name. Everybody, uh, everybody in camp, well, when you start out, I mean, I'm Roger. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, at some point in time, you will get named by another mountain man. Something you do or something that happens in camp. Uh, they named me No Powder. My first year out, I had been to about six events and I had a bad day on a, uh, the rifle trail. I did what they call dry balling. I forgot to prime my rifle when I loaded it. And they call that a dry ball because all it does is click, no, nothing comes out. <clears throat> and so at the end of the, uh, end of the event, when we have uh, pass out the awards, uh, they'll ask, has anybody got a name this time around? And one of the campers, called me up there and announced that I would now be nope. <laughs> so very much just chosen by other people. You have no real say in it at all. No, you have no real say in it at all. They, they will pick your camp name. Now, there are folks out here that have been doing this for 20 years and don't yet have a camp name. They've been very careful. <laughs> but y'all, you'll get a camp name. No Powder had very much to say about the rendezvous. I just got introduced to this about three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I grow up in the city, but I like to go camping. 
Mm -hmm. And I was uh, out having a meal one day, I was sitting around talking with some friends of mine that said, uh, and I was telling them, it was early April, I was excited about going camping for the first time in the season. And this one guy was listening to me, he says, you're a camper, huh? I got something you might be interested in. And he starts telling me about this mountain man stuff. And I thought, wow, I get to go camping and shoot guns, <laughs> play with tomahawks and knives, shoot bows and arrows. That sounds like fun. So I went to my first event as a pilgrim, in civilian clothes, and I was <coughs> hooked. I couldn't get enough of it. And so here I am, and now I uh, I place in the competitions. I shoot rifle, pistol. I throw the hawk and knife, and I've gotten. I found out my forte is a bow and arrow. In fact, two years ago was my first year out here, and they had a, they have a survival bow competition. They give you a stick tell you to carve a bow and we shoot running deer the following day huh. and running deer is a deer about a regular sized deer target normal sized deer that they've got strung between two trees it's on a release they snap the release the deer comes swinging through the trees and we shoot and it's uh, like I said it's it's about competition we want to uh, we want to be the best we want to be better than the next guy <laughs> And we do, we do quite a few of them. We have the, uh, the rifle trails. There's two different rifle trails. Uh, one with a, that uses a, a rifled weapon. The barrels are rifled. The old, uh, before uh, about 1830, they hadn't learned to rifle barrels. So they had uh, a, a clean barrel. And that's what they, uh, they used later on when they, they started trading with the Indians, they would trade the, uh, the what they called the trade gun. Because without a rifle barrel, they weren't quite as accurate. I mean, you had to be really good and know your weapon to be able to hit anything at any distance. Uh, yesterday, we had the duel to the death where I mean, you're dueling, only instead of shooting at each other, we have a, uh, a target with two cans hanging and we'll line up side by side and load our guns. Ready? Fire. We raise up and whoever shoot, when, if you shoot the can, if you shoot your can, there's a buzzard head and the weight of the can still hanging swings it over to the dead guy's side. <laughs> so we have, we have a lot of fun out here. A lot of different competitions. A hawk and knife competition where you walk down the line and there's different targets that you throw a hawk or a knife at and it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Bring all your friends down. And, <laughs> like I said, I mean, if, you, if you like the outdoors at all, once you see this stuff, you just want more of it. <laughs> you can't help yourself. Yeah. After talking with the rendezvous folk, I was directed towards the rifle trail. Along the trail were targets and two brothers practicing their aim. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that trigger. Yeah. Okay, don't film that. Have you ever shot one of these? No, I have not. You want to? You, you let me? Yeah. Ah, why not? Right. Just give it a tap, make sure it's all down there. And next comes the patch. Oops, that's not the one. And what's the patch do? The patch makes the ball tight in the barrel. The, the, the ball is just, this is a 54 caliber. The ball is slightly undersized. So the patch wraps around the ball. And since these are actually, these are not muskets, they're rifles. The patches are what actually engages in the, in the rifling. Hmm. And makes the ball spin. I can get one out over here. So. All right. And this is called a short starter. It's just to get the ball started. And then, oh, this one over here. Oh, sorry about that. This is the, the ramrod. 
the loading rod, and this just gets the ball all the way down. It has to be all the way down, otherwise it's a fight bomb. And the next thing, let me go in front of you. Uh, you want to shoot the bear? Uh, sure. All right. So the next thing we do, we put on a percussion cap. This mm -hmm. makes the spark that sets off the powder. All right. So I'll give it to you now. So All right. this is just called a set trigger. Um, the back trigger makes the front trigger a hair trigger. So it's on half cock now, it won't go off. See how light it is? All right. Or you can use the front trigger by itself. After a walkthrough of the loading process, it was time to fire the rifle. The weight of the rifle and the sweat on my hands made it hard to aim, but I got off a shot at least within the vicinity of the target. I will never know if I actually hit it. Leaving the rifle trail, I was greeted with the beginning of an event, the Miss Wilderness Challenge. This was a woman's only challenge and involved participants racing through a course. The participant would first fire a bow at a deer target before throwing a tomahawk at a moving bear target, and then throwing rocks and knives at another target. Next, the participant would run over to set up a tripod and collect water, before then running over to a picnic table with firewood and sewing a bead to a piece of canvas while eating two crackers. The timer stopped when the participant could whistle. After all the mayhem and madness of the Miss Wilderness Challenge, it was time to say goodbye to the Jed Smith Mountain Men, but not for good. The next day was the 4th of July Parade, in which they are participating as they do every year. It was Independence Day morning, and outside the Flint Center a bunch of buckskin-clad ruffians wielding black powder armaments began staging their march through town. Everyone got situated and the start of the parade was marked with the blast of the cannon outside the museum. <laughs> Spectators jumped and their dogs went ballistic as the mountain men walked down the street firing powder into the air. Filing through spectators and navigating closed roads eventually became too difficult as the mountain men made their way toward the densely packed front street, and I unfortunately had to call it quits. Overall, the mountain men rendezvous was an amazing experience. I highly recommend anyone in Del Norte give it a try. There are trader booths that sell handmade goods, events, competitions, and much more. If you would like more information regarding the Jed Smith Mountain Men and their rendezvous, contact them at 707-839-3967 or visit their Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash tall trees rendezvous forward slash.